Hello everyone, welcome to the Equinox Gaia Meditation Hangout, part three, because we've had a lot of technical difficulties this morning. So I'd like to welcome you all to the Hangout and those watching on YouTube shortly. Um, our primary host, Sarah, uh, has not made it to the internet this morning. So what I thought we could do is maybe have our own little uh, Gaia appreciation kind of meditation hangout in which maybe those who would like to uh, say something about how great our planet is will have an opportunity to do so. So I thought we could start this with our friend Wendy who is present that maybe um, she would have some light language or some channeling or something to uh, start this where we could go into that. Wendy, are you ready to say something? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, right. I just wanted to welcome everybody to the energies of the equinox and to kind of um, substantiate our appreciation for the ascension that we are in the process of and assisting our dear Mother Gaia with. and becoming the star that she is and um, the energies are epic right now they are in a place where they have never been and will not be again for a very long time um, between now and Sunday's uh, full moon um, eclipse and the energies that are taking place right now are um, something we probably all of us in this lifetime haven't experienced to this to this date in, in our timeline as we know time. Um, so it's a very exciting time. The The planet is abuzz with energy and those of us who are gathering across the world um, this week beginning today and all through uh, Sunday and our friends um, at Mount Shasta, our friends out in um, Ireland for the shift, the walk, um, so forth everybody's feeling this these ripples across the planet um, I'm especially feeling it those of us who are um, you know aware of these these energies who can physically feel them um, it's pretty extraordinary and it's very exciting and it there's a lot of aspects to this it's it's there's a lot of things happening um, with the planets themselves and the energies of the planet and the ascension process with all of us in the human collective as well as um, our awareness of our connections to our galactic families to our spirit guides to our um, to each other to our uh, timelines that we all share with one another um, this is Awareness is the ascension. The ascension is becoming aware of all that we are and how we are connected to not only Earth and every part of Earth, every tree, every blade of grass, every ray of sunshine, every cloud, every, every smell, every scent, every color, every light ray, every, every, everything is created by us, for us, for our ascension. And once you become aware of your connection to everything, you will the synchronicities will begin in your life as you've never seen them before. And you will begin to understand that you really did create this for yourself and that everything you see around you, you are connected to. Um, because it was created for you for your experience. The rock you saw yesterday is not the rock you saw today because you're new and so is it. And yet you still exist together in your energy and its energy and it can speak if you allow. If you allow yourself to hear it, you can hear anything speak and you can speak back to it. This is the point too is, is that the veil is disappearing. It's the message I have been, I've been getting recently is the veil is simply your belief. So therefore, if you change your belief that you can remove the veil, then it is done. And I think that's really the message here is we are all very, very powerful creators and we're here to finally discover that within ourselves, see our own light, share our own light, and be the puzzle piece we're here to be to fit in 
to fit into the place you were supposed to be when you decided to take on this magnificent challenge of helping the earth do this. And, you know, I, I, I'm reminded that, you know, this is not kindergarten. This is a master class. And those of us who agreed to do this um, have stepped into our, our power. We've stepped into a role that we understood was not going to be easy. Yet we also understood we chose our individual we chose our individual paths for a reason because we needed to pick up those tools to become the, the, the people we are today. The people we needed to, to be here today in this now, in this energy, to be able to do this together. And with our combined energies, have been never have they been as strong as they are today with the human collective and the energies that we can bring today. Um, uh, to the earth, with the earth, and to the the understanding um, of our uh, connections to each other um, and to all that is, because you know once you begin to understand that um, you know when when you when you kick another, you kick everything that is, and when you send love to another, you send love to all that is. So. If you can remember that as going through your day in everything you do, everywhere you choose to share your light, bring the best of you to everywhere you go and everything you do and every single day and all your your tasks, your um, the people you see every day, and if you greet everything in joy, they then will then greet everything in joy, and so it is. Misato yumala satya nakala kurakana. So pula kasata la kia na malu raha. Sinini ni asa sora kakala malaha satoya kakima la satatia. Sonomala ati ala ruha. Makima la satiatora kamina ala ruha sati. Somalwa satia kaliha. Matala kasoto luraka kina nala. Asala kataya pa. No mala wasaki li kia torakiha. Malasu so paya kalana na nala kora. So turakahi la mala sora kahala. Nasata la kora hasana na lali a koko akitu. Milia soya kalaha sataka katnaha. Pa kora hasatiha. Milasu turaka sina. So palahisa. So no malia sotoraka kila yisa na nilo wakawa la tilia sotoraka shi ni pa kalaha no pokora shana na nalo wasoto kapitia satina na yaha malira hala kora sitiki ala matala sotoraka tina nalo wasiha ni siti lia soraha malo sotorakala Ni tilia sora ha halia, ni yata kia ha, la sizo luraka kia, ma la to luraka lina nanaha, la to luraka sata luraha sina nanalo aki, so paya yisa, so to luraka shita, kalina, ala lieto to luraka hi, no so to luaha, salia nanalo aha, ni talua satiana, kurati alura, nanalo asa, Si tu lua kaha, na tu lo, ma yisa tu lua kaya ma liaha, na lura ha si, so po yurahi na na lua, la kowa hi lia, ni sa tu lua ka shopa, ka la tu rahi, ni si alia tu yaha, ma kala si na na ma lo ruha, ma lua ma la so tu lua ka si na na tu ra ki so tu ruha shi, so no ma liya sa, pardon my dog, Shito lua kasina natu paye liasa. Malo malia soto lua kahiso. Aliso sora ha shonoa. La sito lua katia. Sito lua. There's a lot of serious energy here, so <laughs> he's enjoying it. A soto lua kiha na palaha. Malura hasina naku. Mi siti la sala kahina. Palata trua kahi. La sina natu rahi. Akina naso, malia tulua shia, ni tilia sahi, palata tulua kashi, paita likina naso luaki, palasa tulua ka, 
Manina na susuaha, la kitu wa kashua, halita tatina, soma liaso tuluaka hi, makala turaha. Ashati nasa, matulo wa soto yoko ahila anatua, matua kasala, mahalia turasha na hi alaha soraha tu, anana hi, Asolaha, asolani talashi, hasati yoshoyo kuatahi, namala siyatayaha, katila soto yoko wa paliasa nina. Paliasoto luwa kashayili atolu kwa hiya meala, sinenea sosoto luwa kashoha, kapila asana talia, palakia soto luwaha, malala soto luwaha, makila. Asina no no ma soto luaha. Ma so yo ko a sho no ma soto luaha. Na so no ma soto yo ko a so na ti a sa wa. A lo ko a kaya ma li a ta. Mahala toko. Mahala. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for that, Wendy. Very good feeling energy. Really, really feeling all of that information. Would anybody else like to come up and, uh, and say a little something about their appreciation of Gaia during this equinox? Oh, come on now, guys. Don't make BB the only one to talk. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I'll have to talk. All right. I get to talk for a little while then. <laughs> well, that's what I got. Your turn <laughs> to talk. <laughs> My turn to talk? Mm -hmm. um, so far, I've still not been able to raise Sarah. I'm assuming that she's not having the uh, technology capabilities this morning to uh, be able to join us. Um. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, just talk a little bit about um, my Gaia experiences here lately. They've been very intense. Um, previously, years previously, even though being aware of the whole, you know, the planetary things going on and such, I hadn't really had a, a really strong connection, it seems, and I, I wasn't sure why. Um, it was during the channeling of Jim the other day when he channeled Gaia that I really, really felt um, the great um, Gaia energy connection presence. It was really super awesome. And since then, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful feeling of connection with the planet. It's very fulfilling. And so I'd like to remind folks that if you can ground, if you can spend some time outside, that it's really, really worth it for what you get out of it, having that conscious connection with the planet all the time. Very, very wonderful, very, very fulfilling. So I'd like to share that. Um, I also kind of get that there are portions of the planet that do need a little bit of attention and by giving it that little bit of attention or finding where those spots are within us if we can consciously give them loving attention that we can help heal those places on the planet as we heal those places in us that we really are that connected that that really is how that works and so when we find these little things that are um, wanting our attention, if we can just give them a little bit and give them a little bit of thanks. Uh, Gaia has been repeating over and over and over again to send her your energies that, that aren't, um, aren't pleasing you, that she can purify all of those things for us. So 
sending the earth your troubles say here here I'm having this problem I don't like this I'd rather not experience this here can you please take it Gaia and Gaia will take it and and purify that for you and help you with um, the things that you're having trouble with in your life she loves doing that she loves transferring energy she really enjoys doing these things for us and it's really nice when you think about that and be able to give thanks for that because it's a, it's a very wonderful thing very wonderful experience to have that real-time relationship with the planet and understand it as a consciousness and understand it as something that's interacting with you right there right then in the meaning of that And then I kind of go blank. I'm not sure what else to say other than I'm in a really deep state of gratitude for everything and my experiences that have been going on here lately. And I just really love that. And I'm glad that you all are uh, here to share it with me. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. That was beautiful. And yes, I, I would agree with you that I think sometimes we actually do lose sight or take for granted the um, the fact that the trees breathe what we breathe, and then they breathe out what we need to breathe. So they take our toxins of what we breathe out, and then in turn produce what we need to live. Um, without them, we wouldn't survive. So I have to say that in my journey of ascension to the everyday listener, if you will, or if you're new to this, the day I decided that my job life that I was not happy in, the day I decided that it was no longer going to rule me and <clears throat> the simple act of deciding, making the decision that every day at lunchtime I would walk for 30 minutes outside in the trees changed my life. It literally changed my life. I found everything I found today because the first day I put my shoes on and walked outside on my lunch hour, it changed everything. And if you don't believe it, just try it five minutes a day, just for five minutes. And if you're really able to, take your shoes off, get barefoot, put your feet on the ground, in the grass, just like Dan said, and just be there. Even if you don't understand grounding, even if you don't understand energy, even if you don't understand any of this, just do that. And I guarantee you, your life will change. Yeah, I agree. And it does. And it does. Um, would anybody else like to add an experience or add a gratitude or something? Please, uh come up and say something. Um, I have something, if you don't mind. No, go ahead, Brooke. Welcome in. Okay, hi. Um, so, this is more of a, it's a recollection more than a inspiration, but, um, in Alabama, there is this beautiful park near Gadsden, Alabama, called the Cherokee Rocks uh, National Forest. And I had some amazing experiences there, both like magical, metaphysical, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I think the very coolest thing I saw there was um, due to the heavy Cherokee presence there in its, you know, beginning years, um, it had the most ardent and strong tree guardian spirits I've ever seen. It was a combination of large Indian warrior looking guys and these tiny little things with huge heads that would run at people who came too near the trees they were guarding. But um, it's just, it put me in mind of kind of what people need to do more. We need to be more like the tree guardians and be more stewards to the earth than users of the earth. And But those adorable little things were so feisty and so hell-bent on doing their jobs. And it didn't really hit me 
back then, but it has over the years that they do that because the trees are very, very important, especially the old ones and especially, you know, considering all the information they have just by living on the earth and they communicate with each other. Um, so, yeah, hug a tree or be nice to a tree. Or if you feel a weird feeling around a tree, that means it's being protected, so leave that tree alone. But then go hug another tree. Let's be good stewards. That was rambly. I'm sorry. I'm very tired. No, great, great advice. Great advice. That was awesome, Brooke. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that was really nice. It reminded me of uh, some other times when I had been out some of the places on the planet that I like to visit, uh, especially near water, like going near the water. It's always wonderful. Anybody else have a, a planet appreciation place or a favorite thing they'd like to describe? Hey, this is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, I just wanted to share, I have never understood my complete, utter fascination, and not a fascination, obsession with rocks, like all things rocks, but everything in nature. And um, I woke up this morning and my heart was like, go out now, like um, Wendy was talking about. And I got on my bike and I biked to a stream, got in the middle of the stream and just sent love. And the most amazing thing for me that's been happening with my relationship with Mother Gaia is that, you know, I w learned from a teacher, Matt Kahn was talking about intention, and he said, you could make your, we decide what we perceive uh, our things are, so why not every time I take a breath, I cleanse the earth, you know, and I set my intention every day and do that, and um, I got to sit in the middle of this stream, and it's so beautiful connecting. Um, I was just weeping <laughs> with gratitude for the beauty and also the sadness for how poorly we treat this beautiful gift. And um, so much love. I don't know. When I did a... When we did the meditation with Jim and Mother Gaia that was just a moving profound deep deep experience for me um, a lot of tears I just feel like I connect and process and filter you know through my tears <laughs> um, I guess that's all I have to share thanks thank you Michelle wonderful does anybody else have uh, anything they'd like to add or share? Okay. I think I'd like to do a little something. A little uh, a little visual. Oh, cool. Yeah, a little visual. Just um just a little journey. So let's um let's take a breath. Just a couple of nice deep breaths, something just casual. Just a couple of breaths to get us in our place where we are, get us present. And then from wherever you are, whatever your location is, imagine going upward, upward through your ceiling, out through the roof, or out through the top of your cave if you're in a cave, and up into the air, and just up above the tree line, and just notice as, as you go upward how no matter where you go, there's another perspective of Gaia there. And you go through the air and you see more trees. And the, the higher you go, you see even more things. And then you begin seeing the lay of the land. And then you go up and say you're up to the cloud level. Say you're up, you know, 10,000 feet or so. And you can really, really see 
the lay of the land and how the waters have run and you can see the the ruts where the water has created over time and then uh, you can go up even higher maybe even above the clouds but maybe some clear spots where you can see where maybe perhaps the glaciers uh, move through and you can see how they scarred the land a little bit but the land comes and uh, and vegetation uh, comes back over and, and covers it right up again and gives it a nice uh, nice color and you can go up even more into uh, the first reaches of space and you can kind of see the whole globe for the first time and you can look down and you can look at the nice colors of the waters and see the different places and notice the different countries and all the people that are there living on this wonderful wonderful place and you can go on into space even more where you can see the moon beside the earth and see it all kind of be together in one spot and just kind of just kind of linger there for a moment just linger and just really 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 notice how wonderful all of this is all the vegetation all the water all the air all the things that are available in this space every bit of it even the things that we don't particularly care for but they're still here in harmony aren't they they're still here in this wonderful space that we share and there's a gratitude there and that gratitude is that soft little voice of Gaia that says I love you too you're a piece to me and I'm a piece of you we are all here together in this wonderful loving space and just feel that for a moment just feel that for a moment breathe it in how wonderful that is and it's okay sometimes we disconnect from that and it's okay our lives are a little busy sometimes but this love is always here sitting right next to whatever else we're experiencing it's always available to us anytime we wish it's always there it's never not been there for us and that doesn't mean you need to go into a guilt about it that's not the intent there the point is it's always there this love is always here for you it's always going to be here for you it's not going anywhere this is where it resides and we reside within it it's a very very loving wonderful thing my vision just got very pretty it's like wow what a beautiful place we are at now for just a moment give your attention to all the different energies that are allowed here all the solar energy all the spiritual energies all the energies that are allowed here how dynamic that is all the cosmic energies even energies that we've never experienced before are all here as well and all energies are welcome and all energies are here and we're able to experience those with Gaia as well I'm being reminded about all the energies that are to come we're going to experience a lot of really 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 interesting energies and this month has been a really good reminder of that this month has been full of all kinds of interesting energies ups and downs cleansings and 
and, and gifts and all kinds of things we've been able to experience. It's been a very, very dynamic, energetic month. So it's not just the planet that provides for us physically. It also provides for us energetically. And it's good to remember that. It's not just a, a one-trick pony kind of thing. It is very, very dynamic, very, very vast. And above all, very, very loving and accepting. Hmm. What a wonderful portion of appreciation. So now I'd like to bring everybody back in. So everybody, please begin descending. Descending back towards your homes. Any speed that you prefer. Coming back from space going past the moon, coming into the atmosphere. Begin seeing the vegetation and the water even more, maybe seeing the sun glint off the water. As you come back into more denser atmosphere, into the clouds and all their wonderful, beautiful formations. Noticing all the wonderful vegetation again, all the different varieties of life that are here. And then gliding yourselves gently back into your homes, back into your bodies, back into your space. What a nice, nice, wonderful little trip. Mm. Thank you, Gaia. Thank you very much. And thank you for your love. And thank you for sharing so unselfishly with everyone and everything. Mm. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Mm. Nice, very nice. Beautiful, Dan. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Go Thank on you. a little, little trip to space and back. Booyah. Just lovely. What a lovely journey. Yes, that was nice. Does anyone, um, <laughs> does anyone have anything else they'd like to add, or if they'd like to do any other little meditation or anything else they'd like to add? I did want to expand just a little bit, Dan, on something in my experience with, with the earth. And, you know, I, I spend a lot of time out there in the forest and, and out there in the farm fields and um, because of where I live in the Midwest. And I have a very deep appreciation. And just like Michelle, there's times when I'm literally weeping out there in gratitude. It's a feeling I can't really describe until you've experienced it. Um, the type of connection that you feel because of the overwhelming gratitude um, that you feel and it's a love that you know is shared when you, you feel it towards it and you know you feel it in return and I found myself one day <clears throat> doing a light language video in the cornfield and I was immersed in this amazing energy of this knowing that it was like I got this big picture but it was I was looking at the stalks of corn and the individual ears of corn and then the individual seeds of corn on each ear and how how magnificent I was feeling how honored and how honored I felt to be among this corn because I I was getting this like image they I was like shown this image of like the corn being ground up and then being you know um, distributed among like food products and cereals and I, I'm seeing like this ear of corn being spread all over the globe and um, and then all of the corn stalks and then the corn fields and how it, in unison with the sun and the water and the soil and the to look at the roots of the corn and 
I was just feeling this immense gratitude just looking at this fantastic amazing piece of grain that's being distributed and and I could be potentially looking at a piece of corn that might feed someone across the world or be in a baby cereal or be in a who knows you know a dog food I mean so I was feeling so immensely grateful that I could witness this right here because not and we take for granted um, our own surroundings sometimes and the beauty that we have right in our own back door and I'm fortunate that I have that right in my own back door and to be able to experience something like that which and share it with others I found um, I was so grateful to be there and to be able to do that and to be able to share it and to be able to witness this feeling of the connection to all of that and everyone across the world and everyone across the galaxies and and to understand our true connection and it really is amazing when you can look at something s as simple as a blade of grass or and and really realize the magnificence of it all um, so yeah it's the gratitude um, that we can show even in the smallest things makes the biggest difference Yeah, that's nice. While you were speaking, I was being reminded of, um, like the uh, the geometry of things, the uh, even the sacred geometry, the way the uh, plants are designed, and um, how the things grow and how they unfold, and uh, the whole process of uh, of life expanding. I'm glad you mentioned that about the sacred geometry because you know that's something that I get a lot of um, downloads with. When I'm out there, is and I'm actually literally filming sacred geometry in nature. I mean, the, what you see out there is amazing because it's actually messages. And, it, and when you start to be aware that they're messages, you start to see it. And I see sacred geometry in everything, in fallen trees, in the way they crisscross each other, the way they bend and sway, and and how they grow. And so I'm constantly being reminded of this filming that to show the sacred geometry is everywhere around us everywhere so I'm so happy that you said that yeah it's uh, just something that came up you know the, even the expansion of, like the fractal information you know as it expands and, and you know and the things grow and, and all those things and which is very interesting I'm not an expert in that stuff I don't have a whole lot of words for it I'm just very appreciative of it Would anybody else like to uh, say a couple words? Yeah, this is Michelle. Um, I just wanted to share that when I was meditating in the stream today, I realized um, this is a really beautiful experience, that I was sending love and appreciation and healing, and then it occurred to me so strongly that I'm allowed to get that back from Mother Gaia. So it was kind of, a vid in my mind, it was like almost like the yin-yang symbol, like me, I don't know, being interconnected with the earth and um, realizing that as much as I want and can send love and healing for her, she also is there for me, which is why I have feelings of utter indescribable joy when I'm in nature. When I sometimes I like to play the manifesting game where I find the coolest rock, or do you have a present for me? <laughs> and it never fails. <laughs> um, and it's just such a delight. But also just really realizing just how strongly the earth mother Gaia wants to heal us as well that's all that's right yeah it's a it's a great um, great exchange it's like uh, you know, it's like I was saying that the love that's there is always there it's never not been there and even though sometimes we forget, it's still always right there when we go back to find it. It's always right where we left it. 
rather than that nice little quiet space. Let's go there and find it. Oh, there you are. Very nice, wonderful to think about. I know there's a lot that could be said about the equinox energies and a lot of the, uh, you know, we're going into harvest time in, in the United States and other places. Uh, some places are going into their uh, their summers or we're going into our falls. So um, I know for some people on the planet it's a different kind of energy. Instead of harvest, it's um, renewal. So for those that are experiencing that, it's... Uh, that's all allowed as well. Oh, great point, Dan. But, um, I don't know. I just feel in a really great uh, state of gratitude. I know um, I'd like to talk to you for a minute about uh, Sarah's journey to Ireland, going to all the sacred sites and all of these things during the equinox, during these full moons, doing this high energetic time, and how important it is for... Uh, the sensitive people, even the less sensitive people. There might be some people who wonder, why are these people even doing all this stuff? Say, so, well, you know, because we feel it's energetically important. You know, we feel these ties to these things. We sense our planet. We sense other energies. We, we sense all these things, and we don't go into a denial about them. Instead, we embrace them and enjoy them and sometimes interact with them. And... Uh, and have a great fulfilling experience and that's why that's why we're just not you know these these dull pieces of experiences we we experiment and you know learn about ourselves and our sensitivities and things and why they're important and then we find out other people think they're important too <laughs> we end up in groups like this where we're talking about energies and talking about gratitudes and appreciations for the things that we experience. So I'd like to thank her for going on this trip to do her things. Um, I think the arrangement was if she wasn't able to make it um, through the internet, if she couldn't find internet at her site, that they would film it and post it later. So there might be some words from Sarah on her journey uh, today uh, at the sacred site. I forgot the name of it. Uh, in Snock, in Snock, Ireland, it's the center, the geographic center of Ireland. It's a sacred site. There's, uh, they believe it was an impact crater at one point. I'm not sure that uh, the impact crater is now a pond or a lake, so it's hard to hard to tell. But I hope she'll have us uh, some more information about uh, that later. So more on that later. Um. I'm kind of at a lull. Uh, Wendy, do you have any anything you'd like to add? No, I was just thinking about Will's um, trip today to Mount Shasta um, for the Equinox as well. Um, he's heading up there, and he'll be up there this afternoon doing um, another, uh, I believe he's going to do a live hangout from Mount Shasta as well, so that's where he was heading up to if anybody um, has... The opportunity to join in that later. I believe he said it. Oh, didn't he say three o'clock um, p Eastern time, um, Dan? Yeah, I think it is three o'clock. It's two p.m. Yeah. Uh, Central time, my time. Yeah, two p.m. here. So, um, and it is it is posted. But uh, so it's just a, a very highly energetic day. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things, a lot of hangouts going on tonight too. Things going on around the world actually all week until Sunday. So exciting stuff. It's a big energetic time. It really is. Roxy, did you have something you wanted to add? Sure. I'll give you a little um, story if you'd like to hear it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. The idea about um, Gaia was, uh, <clears throat> let's say, a, a, a very young entity, a very young fractal, and we can really put a timeline on it, on how let's say, long she's been in this Logos, this universe, this galaxy, if you will. And her appreciation for what you call physicality started out as a, an idea of a proton moving into the idea of experiencing what it is to be that of light, 
and birthing in between the spirituality world and birthing into the physical world. And she spent many times, many eons there, many, many experiences as different ideas of within the, couched within the construct of first density. And then there was a host planet that's not much different than ours, but in a more centralized part of the galaxy. And, I'm, and when I say galaxy, I'm not talking about the spiral galaxy we are in, the Milky Way. We're, I'm talking about the probably about a million plus galaxies within, and I'm sorry about the dog barking over there, a million plus galaxies within what we understand this universe. And so she got to play on there as, you know, on top of the surface, much like we're on top of the surface, which we are a part of Gaia, which is part of the sun, which is part of the galaxy, which is part of the central sun. And, you know, we all know the time, the continuation. So she spent many, many, uh, well, let's put it this way, an extraordinary amount of time playing within the field of second density now beyond what most would already do. You know, it's all a choice on graduating yourself from a second density to third density and whenever you feel you're ready to move on to, for the next experience. But she really played it out. She played out what we would understand as Earth, and, you know, not the, the Earth we know, but the physical idea of mineral and, and ground and rock and stone, things like that. And then, of course, she played the element of fire and what we call air, which is truly space. And um, the idea of atmosphere, space, you know, rather uh, wind. But, uh, you know, on this other planet, there was not that much variety. And, that, and that's a big key. Uh, and then as she finished the journey of that idea, she chose and found a host, if you will, that would allow in co-creation, um, her to experience herself as what you would call an entire planet. So her first journey was that of a smaller planet on the outskirts of the galaxy she was currently playing within. And it was more of a non-atmospheric, not quite a moon idea, but it had a small amount of atmosphere and she was just understanding herself playing within the idea of everything that she has learned to now experience it from the self of from the, let's say, perspective of self-creation as herself. Mm, very, very good. So <clears throat> she did this for a couple of eons, I would suppose. It sounds right. And then she was called upon, mm, called upon by a logos, which we understand is our sun. And our sun says we are birthing a new what you call galaxy, and I'm going to be the idea of this. Well, in this case, we would call it a solar system for beneficial ideas of equation. So that idea, Logos, came to the Gaia idea for her experiential history in her soul memory complex to understand what it is to be many aspects for an extended period of time. So then she did, let's say, accept the offer and became what we call our solar system in the idea of the planet that you all sit upon every day. But the planet that you know today is was, let's say, nothing like the planet that we understand. It was very, very different, vastly different, and the atmospheres were different, and the surface was different, and it was very, and historically speaking, in one aspect, and the timeline, volcanic in that idea, but truly that's just a historical of evolution, her birthing herself into this idea. And we also like to have you know that she... Gaia, is. this is her last hosting, if you will. You understand she has hosted four other ascensions, four other physical idea species upon the surface of her that she was a part of creation and has allowed that idea through the turmoil and the joys of being a physical idea, ascension species, and now it's the fifth and final time for her. And she will, yes, move into what we call our uh, next density, or fourth density, which she is there as well, preparing the earth that humanity will live upon in that idea. So we would like you to know her history a little bit on, on how she experienced herself. 
and how well versed, and this is key, well versed she is in the experience of hosting in Ascension. Her, let's say, resolve is exponential. She understands and most certainly understood in what you call the past what she was in for. So the experience she would like you to understand is not the things that are happening for they will take care of themselves with the built-in element of unconditional love that is always perpetuating. What she would like you to understand is the focus on where we're going is the joy. We don't have to harbor so much on what has happened because our experience of love on where we are going and how we're going to shift and what we're doing for ourselves, including Gaia herself, she's much appreciative, oh yes, is what will increase the, let's say, drive, if you will, to have that occur. And that would only, what you would, well, let's say, equate to is increasing the probability in time to a lesser amount of time between this then and that now of what we call the ascension. So get excited about the love. Get excited about this idea equinox for it is exponential once again it is unequatable as that of Wendy Wool pardon me Wendy has said earlier that it is no other time as these energies these are these energies experienced by our perception for the first time in all the nows of the human ascension so this is an accelerator if you will for to have us grasp and hold and cherish and love that we are ascending. And this is her message. Don't worry about what has happened. I have scars. I've been through a lot. I've been battered and torn. But the energetic love that you are always offers me that idea of healing. Only fortifies my resolve to become the planet that I know I want to become. I am ready for the fourth density. This is all. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Rocky. Thank you. That was amazing. Great. You're welcome. You. Yeah, that was nice. Oh, Brian left. I miss Brian. Brian fell out while you were in your uh, message. Cool beans. Thank yeah, you, Michelle. He'll, he'll be back when he's able. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of out of material. <laughs> God dang it, funny. Rox. You always freaking make me cry. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, beautiful, isn't it? Katie, would you, um, would you like to share something? Just nod if you'd like to, and I'll unmute you. Otherwise, if you want to stay private. No? I guess that's a no. Okay. I won't put her on the spot then. Uh, anybody else have anything Wait, they'd like to... Wait, hold on now. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. There you are. Hello? Yeah. I yeah, was on hi, mute. Hi. Yeah, hi. Hi. <laughs> I was on mute. I, don't, I do not mind being put on the spot. Um, so I just moved um, East Coast to West Coast side. Um, I was looking for a huge change in my life and um, just... Uh, reconnecting with being grateful in my life. I read a lot of really good books that helped me reevaluate um, coming back to the center of it all. And um, it's just been amazing the journey that's been unfolding for me as I've been coming out here. Um, literally, as I started making my choices and my decisions, um, I was given a truck to come out to the West Coast like two days before I even came out here. I was going to rent a car and buy it, but the universe was like, no, I'm going to give this to you instead. <laughs> um, and so I've just been on, uh, like I said, a journey of just becoming grateful for every single thing in my life and I'm excited about being connected with you people. I'm excited that I met Will and Brian on the plane and I am very excited about what the future has to bring because I can see that, you know, that there's a lot of conscious people in this world and it's beautiful. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. What a great. Thank you. What a great. Sharing. Sharing. And I find it <laughs> amazing. You. I find it amazing. That you met on the plane. That you met on the plane. And you're here today. And you're here today. You know, with all of and, us. With and all of us. Yes. And I'm shaking with the energy that's flowing through <laughs> you right I now. Can tell. I can tell. 
And believe me, those of us who are empaths can feel it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing feeling. It's beautiful. When is this Wendy, right? Yes. That's speaking. Yes. When you were talking about um, sitting in the cornfield and being so grateful that you were brought to tears, I've had that happen so much in my life in the past two months. It's been crazy. And you guys, I have to tell you, there are birds sitting in the in the tree right outside my window. There's a flock of them just sitting there listening. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, amazing that you're um, here with us. No, absolutely. I was, I just, there's, uh, there's like, no literally. Life there's in no life in there is not. There is definitely not any accidents, that is for sure. Synchronicity. Synchronicity. Yes. Is harmony. Is harmony. Yes. Yes, there is a little bit of the echo yes, coming back like through Katie's phone, like but Katie's that happens phone. with little portable devices. Yes. <laughs> okay, does anybody else have anything else they'd like to add? We're happy you're here, Katie. We're happy you're here, Katie. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I would like to, um, would like to uh, offer up the idea uh, that. Hmm. Wait, I'm getting yeah. feedback. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to mute. Okay. Sorry. So I would like to offer up the idea um, that the tears are, to welcome the tears, to embrace the tears, to let them flow. I just feel like it's so cleansing. Um, it is maybe the favorite, my favorite thing I do. <laughs> and I do it a lot. <laughs> but, um, yeah. When, when it comes, that feeling, I just feel like, is a gift from our body alerting us that we have stuff to clear or that we're clearing stuff for something else. So that's all. Beliefs are shed in tears. Yes, very yeah, much so. I'd like to add that um, you know, when we get a wound or if we have... Um, I don't know, or if we get a little dirty or something, we'll, we'll wash it off with some water or something. But when you get a wound on the inside or something dirty on the inside, the tears are how we clean the things on the inside that we can't reach. And it's, it's important to remember that uh, they serve a very important purpose. And it doesn't always necessarily mean a negative. It could be that we're just um, cleaning something on the inside or helping something release or or something else. So the tears are really wonderful things. Anyway, I like tears. Now you know. <laughs> That's right. And gratitude. I have so... Sometimes I cry with joy, and sometimes I cry with gratitude. Tears are something special. I don't know. They are. They indeed are. They, they are so many things for so many reasons. Okay. Nobody has anything else to add. Maybe, uh, Wendy, do you have a minute for a blessing, maybe, and we can um, yes. go ahead and close? All right, thanks. Sure. The energies gathered here today are like no other. Like no other now. <laughs> the birds concur. Nisia tolua kasa milia so rahi na 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 kwa milia so soa lia to mai la roha nisi tilia kaso ya malua isia na na lua kai wali a so kwa kai milia so tora na kwa na malia so tolua kabilia tolua kashi na lia to rakaha so na na waha la roha. Malia se sotolua kashitu, Camilia sotoluaha, Makura, Male si tolua kashu. Mitilia so so poa kasilia no malaru, Makura kasitolua. 
Niti tia saki tia, shono mali a saki a tura hila. Mai lia na mala. Matura ka si tura ki mala hi sadulia kokoya pahi. Siti lia sosora hi tia. Niti ki a soto lua hai hi na mala waku. Mala wasa tuya kaina. Malura hi si tia kaitu. Mai lia na mali a soto. Masi tulu waka shuya mali asura hai li apura kaha. Malu asa toya. Nisi tili asa soya la apua li anamawa. Liti a kaya waha. Nina malu asa soya la wako a kaya boha. Na taiko a kaso du waha la uru hama ya mali asi. Siti a taya ma wawa. Malu asa soya kaya ma nina maha. Niki saya ma ke tuyo kwa liya iliya ha. Iliya toyo kwa salahi na ma ya walo ahi. Iliya na ma la waso to haki na ma shu. Piki ya saya la waso to yu ha. Miki ti ya tulu yu ha ya ma la waso ya. Haka yu waso ha ya. Ali ha ya ma wa. Itu yu kwa sufu yu ashu. Miti wa halatu kaya ma hi. Malua so so tua kashu yo mahito yo kwa nina na mahiso tiki a te a yi a yo awi. Mahi ala koso no mai tui asa. You are all timeless living light. Na si a to yo kwa shi a te. Mahaliya Tulsa. Namaste, Mahana. Niso Fiyoshu. Namaste. I'd also like to add a little message from Gaia as well. She says, I am very diverse because you are very diverse. I am very beautiful because you are very beautiful. I am very happy because you are very happy. We enjoy this love together, and I'm happy to be here with you. Namaste. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to remind everybody of Will's uh, Equinox Shasta broadcast starting in a couple of hours, three hours or so. I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank you all for uh, going through the uh, technical difficulties I had this morning and uh, and helping me triumph. That was wonderful. Glad we finally got everything going even though we were nearly an hour late. Thank you, Dan. You're a champ. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, I hope to have some word from Sarah later. Um, I will post um, when I when I learn something. So until then, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for sharing your stories. Thank you all for uh, sharing your energy. And uh, and thank you all for being you. And with that, we will go. Thank you, everyone.